Yeah, I've been a big fan my whole life of traveling the world and spearfishing. And it's, uh, it's one of the few ways that you can still explore. I mean, Google Earth and cell phone coverage and everything else is kind of taking a lot of that away from us. And to travel to some exotic place, get in the water where no one may have been before, at least not in the, the way you're going to do it, and see what's down there. I mean, it's really one of the last ways we can explore, you know, the last frontier, if you will. A few years ago, I had a chance to do a trip just like that with some good friends of mine, uh, Cameron Kirkconnell, Craig Clayson, and Brian Head. And we planned a trip to East Africa. Luckily, we'd done our homework and uh, we were there at the right time. And it was unbelievable some of the things we saw there. Um, you know, in order to get these trips, you really do have to sacrifice sometimes. And uh, we, got, we got really lucky. We were in the right place at the right time. And, Everything came together after three weeks of just, you know, getting beat up and guys being sick, losing stuff, and just having run-ins with things, you know, that just don't happen to normal people in this day and age. Having to go to sleep at night, shut off all the lights and worry about pirates, and then wake up and supposedly be relaxed enough to do a 120-foot dive to, to shoot the fish of your life. But uh, we're like, you know, what, what can go wrong? You know, there hadn't been any pirate attacks here in the last week. Yeah, that one day um, Brad and I got under the fish um, and Craig and Brian were right there with us, you know, to, to document it and, and to be down there with us. And, uh, and we got two fish, 241 and 242 pounds or something, right there, same size and everything is, is unbelievable. Doggies are, are the, the single fish that I don't care who you are, how, how great of a diver you are, how, how much experience you have, how much money you have, they'll, they'll humble anyone. Like, no matter what you know coming into it, they'll change all of that. Those same attributes that make dog tooth tuna such a hard fish to land are the same reasons that we want to go after them. But, um, Somehow we pulled it off. Uh, I'm, we're lucky that we've got a bunch of good guys that sit, share this, this same uh, crazy mentality that we have and, and want to do it. All the stars have to align and everything's got to come together for you to get lucky enough to land it. It just, it, it just doesn't happen. Just getting a spear in one is half the battle. That, like, I get more nervous once I shoot one. It's the landing them part that's really tough. There's so many variables involved that can go wrong, and uh, it's just a really exciting fish. On the middle of the 14th day, you know, the 
full moon must have been moon over or moon under and the tides were right and the current just an eddy hit the reef the right way and all of a sudden there were just dog teeth just swirling around everywhere. Or 200.6. So I broke it by 40 pounds and he broke it by 43 pounds. Yeah, I just called Junior and left him a voicemail. Try to get him all pumped up. Oh, same.